What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. And today is another Thursday threes, or three for Thursday, or whatever it is I wanna call it. And I am going to be comparing three prime lenses to one 24 to 70 lens, which is the Sigma 2470 DG DN. DN stands for, of course, these nuts to see if the Sigma can legitimately replace three prime lenses. Of course, I'm a tube douche and I'm going to lie to you like the Chinese government lied about the coronavirus. I will also compare it to the 85, which I will be testing now four lenses, 24, 35, 55, and 85 versus the Sigma 24 to 70. Now, general 50 millimeter lenses are 50 millimeter, but in my case, Sony has a Zeiss 55. I'm gonna just use 55. I could have used my 50 millimeter Zeiss, but I'm trying to stay under a thousand dollars for these prime lenses. The only one that is over a thousand dollars is a 24 millimeter GM F 1.4, which is probably not the most fair comparison to the Sigma, but for this sake, that's what I'll use. So why did I pick the Sigma 24 to 70 DG DN these nuts lens versus GM uh, 24 to 70? Well, the 24 to 70 GM lens is extra expensive. It is $2,500 and these lenses combined probably add up to around $2,500. You know, obviously 24 millimeter GM will throw everything out the window. And this is only $1,100. US dollars and of course three billion dollars Canadian and one trillion dollars Vietnamese. So why did I not compare it to the Tamron? Because the Tamron is absolute trash of a lens. I'm just kidding. The 28 to 75 is not a true 24 to 70. So I really wanted to stick with a true 24 to 70 lens. And the 24 millimeter is a lot more versatile for you to use than the 75 millimeter is on the Tamron versus the 70 millimeter on most 24 to 70 zoom lenses. You could always get close to the subject, crop in after and post, but you can never go backwards usually and or edit in a wider scene after the fact. So the 24 millimeters is always more versatile than what 28 millimeters would offer, such as what the Tamron offers at its widest length. So all of you know that I'm not all into like pixel peeping and all this trash. But what really is important to me is bokeh performance. So why would someone use prime glass versus a more versatile zoom lens? It is usually because of the extra stops of light, which means you could do, in this case, f1.4, f1.8, 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 versus this is f2.8, which obviously in low light, if you're running Canon, Nikon cameras that is absolute complete trash at low light comparatively to Sony, then yes, you will probably need these extra f stops. However, Sony is known to be incredible in low light, very low noise at higher ISOs. So, for most of us, f 2.8, even in you know ISO 6400, is very usable. Uh, so, you may not even need to go down to f1.8 whether you're you know for video or photo so generally speaking if you don't already know this prime lenses are sharper than zoom lenses is because you know there's a lot less moving parts now and obviously you get more shallow depth of field because you can open up your aperture to f1.8 f1.4 to get that nice blurry background and that does not mean that f2.8 does not have an amazing blurry background as you probably see when i show you the photos that i took earlier today and immediately before i even look at the pictures i will tell you that obviously the 2470 is a lot more versatile than the primes because you have a 24 to 70 millimeter range to, to pick from if you need to go wide you can if you need to go tighter you can it's overall more versatile lens to use versus so switching out three different lenses whenever you know you feel like you have to but again the advantage for primes is it could handle low light situations better and it could get the most shallow depth of field possible and the reason why i'm doing this video is because i have always been a prime shooter i do have never really used zooms but lately ever since i got the sigma dg d's nuts lens i have th this lens 
has been used and abused by me. It has been locked onto my camera the whole time. Um, I have not really touched my um, prime lenses that much. Um, pretty much every gig I do or every little, everywhere I go that I feel like I need to bring a camera, I've always been bringing the uh, 24 to 70 uh, simply because of the way it performs. It autofocus is really, the autofocus is fantastic. Um, and obviously the zoom range. Um, one thing I also like to mention, you know, especially when you compare it to, you know, the 55 and the 85 is that this thing has really good uh, close focusing distance compared to the 55 Sony and the 85 Sony. Um, the 24 and the 35 millimeter Sony prime lens does really well uh, with close focusing. So that's one thing. But obviously, if you're on 24, you're not going to be able to, you know, you're stuck at 24. You're this really wide lens. You can't um, take portraits too close or else their face look all weird and you're locked down to one focal length. Before I even go into like the sample comparison uh, photos that I took earlier, um, I'm going to just go ahead and answer the question. Can a 2470 replace a line of prime lenses? Yes, in 95% of the situations you need to shoot as a photographer, videographer, the 24 to 70, in this case, Sigma DGD's nuts lens, which is versatility, close focusing, uh, great performance and autofocus, sharpness, and the 11 aperture blades for smooth bokeh, yes, it can replace all your prime glass in most situations. The other 5% or so, if you really want to get super artsy, really shallow depth of field, if for some reason, you know, it's a really low light and you just want like the best performance possible with no noise at all, um, or of course, lightness, because this lens is heavy compared to the these four lenses here. So yeah. Um, those are the times where the primes will be most preferred if you just want to get this really distinct, crazy look. But this 2470 DG, these nuts lens is not a slouch of a lens at all. Um, as I mentioned in previous videos, which I'll link up here, uh, you'll see that it's an amazing lens. It performs great. And, uh, you know, you can balance it on gimbals, all that stuff. So let's take a look at the picture, shall we? So comparing the Sigma 24 millimeter at f2.8 versus the Sony 24 millimeter at 2.8, it is clear that one, I messed up this comparison photos as I was a little bit too close to the uh, lens uh, compared to what I did with the Sony lens. But as you can see um, at f2.8, the Sigma, uh, Immediately, the bokeh is actually a lot smoother than, than the GM. But the uh, overall sharpness, I mean, I'm not gonna pick the peep, but they are both very sharp and you cannot complain. Again, all these photos were taken at 400 ISO. So, uh, now the one advantage, obviously, of the Sony lens is because it is an F1.4 aperture. So I will also show you that, hey, look, this f1.0 aperture and even though i am further away from the uh, camera here uh compared to the sigma picture the bokeh is smoother uh even even more blown out so as you can see with the prime lens you could definitely get that super shallow depth of field compared to a zoom f 2.8 however you know the sigma is definitely not a slouch at all and next, you know, we want to look at the Sigma at 35 millimeter f 2.8. And I'll go ahead and also open up the Sony 35 millimeter at f 2.8. And I think I did a slightly better job of taking the picture, you know, at more of the same focal length. But you can see here, the Sony seems to have some smoother, well, maybe not. The Sony here is co comparable. At f2.8, if you look at the bokeh performance of these two lenses, I mean, they look almost identical at f2.8. Now, the Sony 35 has the advantage of the f1.8 aperture, so we do have to show that compared. And there you have it. It is slightly smoother than the Sigma. Um, 
at f 2.8 versus f 1.8 obviously and you know it there might be a slight advantage in terms of how i took the photo of the um sigma because slightly closer to the camera but if you look here both lenses perform very sharp and the colors are quite similar now i'm going to open the sigma up at 55 and the sony at 55 f 2.8 and immediately the sony just seems a little bit brighter but overall sharpness is there and the sony zeiss bokeh at f 2.8 is just really really smooth um but the sigma again it's no slouch um if you want to look at this in more detail you go ahead and pause the footage but to be fair again the 55 can do f 1.8 so let's open up that and look at that bokeh on the f 1.8 it is completely just vanished uh it's very smooth very nice looking uh smooth bokeh at f 1.8 for the 55 millimeter but the bokeh obviously on the sigma is not as blown not as smooth not as juicy but it's still very nice and it still separates the subject from the background even at f 2.8 and of course the maximum range for the sigma is 70 millimeters f 2.8 and as you can see the bokeh looks very smooth and nice at 70 millimeters f 2.8 and obviously the 85 is going to look even more smooth and you know just bokehlicious for a lack of a better word and yeah i mean you know the picture speaks for themselves so can you take portraits with a 70 millimeter f2 plane of course you can is the bulk enough yes it is but if you just want that nice extra creamy juiciness you're gonna have to pick up an f an 85 prime and of course at f 1.8 the 85 prime is even more juicy almost as juicy as a fresh fried egg roll from your local chinese food restaurant and no it is probably not juicy because there is some cat meat in there i hope but somehow it is very juicy and yeah so that's the comparison of the photos you tell me if f 2.8 is satisfactory to you versus prime f 1.8 and i'll be honest with you you know, after having this lens for the past couple of months, I have to say I'm very satisfied. I've used it a ton. Like I said, it's been locked on my camera this whole time. And, you know, I'm just so glad to be able to have a 1000 to one hundred one one thousand to $1,100 piece of glass that uh, performs just as well in some cases better than the sony g master f uh 2470 f 2.8 um that i could literally just put this on my camera and just carry one camera one lens around instead of having to switch on and off and yes i do sacrifice some of that really juicy bokeh but as you can see in the photos i hope you know you would agree that the f 2.8 bokeh is plenty i mean uh even when you look at the camera the only thing that's in focus is the actual lens element and like the sony um logo on the camera is completely blurred out so it definitely separates the subject from the background no questions about it um yeah so i hope this helped somebody make a decision am i going to be getting rid of my prime glass no of course not because i do professional work and i do use these lenses from time to time um especially if i'm trying to create certain looks or low light situations or just having extra lenses for different angles for weddings for interviews etc etc i need more lenses and if you're one of those out there you just bought a sony a7 III or you're looking to you know get into buying a sony a7 III look you could actually now buy like sony a7 III's for like between 1500 to 1800 dollars brand new if you know where to look and you could get a 1000 dollar lens and literally this thing for $2,500, you could have a full frame, amazing performing camera for photo and video and have a versatile lens that you could use on pretty much any project that you want to use it on. So with that being said, that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of 
Thursday threes. And until next time, lighten up. <laughs>